today is our last session on the study of Nehemiah. Shout hallelujah, she's finally done. Now I'm going to wrap up today based on Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 10 to 16, and chapter 7, verses 1 and 3. One day I went to the house of Shemaiah, son of Deliah, the son of Mehetabel, who was shut in at his home. He said, Let us meet in the house of God, inside the temple, and let us close the doors, because men are coming to kill you. By night they are coming to kill you. But I said, Should a man like me run away, or should someone like me go into the temple to save his life? I will not go. I realized that God had not sent him, but that he had prophesied against me because Tobiah and Sambalat had hired him. He had been hired to intimidate me so that I would commit a sin by doing this and then they would give me a bad name to discredit me. Remember Tobiah and Sambalat, my God, because of what they have done. Remember also the prophet Nodiah and how she and the rest of the prophets have been trying to intimidate me. So the wall was completed on the 25th of Elo in 52 days. When all the enemies heard about this, all the surrounding nations were afraid and lost their self-confidence because they realized that this work had been done with the help of our God. Chapter 7 verses 1 and 3 After the wall had been rebuilt and I had set the doors in place, the gatekeepers, the musicians, and the Levites were appointed. I said to them, The gates of Jerusalem are not to be opened until the sun is hot. While the gatekeepers are still on duty, have them shut the doors and bar them. Also, appoint residents of Jerusalem as guards, some at their posts and some near their own houses. Now, I know that was a bit lengthy, but bear with me because this is the wrap-up. It seems like there is no end to the harassment that Nehemiah and his people were undergoing. They continued with their acts of intimidation. They came at Nehemiah from all angles. This time, they sent a false prophet to lure him into the temple, some place that they think he would be tricked into going. Can you imagine they tried to use the temple to carry out their evil schemes? But Nehemiah was girded with discernment. He realized it was a trick from the enemy and he refused to go. They didn't get him to sin by putting a stop to the work, so now they tried to get him to fall into their trap so they could give him a bad name and make a mockery of him and his relationship with his God. Now this is exactly what the enemy tries to do to us when we are doing the work of the kingdom. Despite all they went through though, Nehemiah and his workers were able to complete the wall and they did so in 52 days. Remember the promise God made to us to heal our land in 52 days? The condition was once we held our end of the bargain and pray. And this is exactly what Nehemiah did throughout this study. And look how God showed up and showed off on his behalf. He wants to do the same for us. Now when the enemies heard and saw that regardless of their plans and threats and harassment, the work was completed, they and the surrounding nations became afraid because they realized that this was the hand of God at work on behalf of Nehemiah and his people. They knew that there was no way that they could have pulled this off on their own. God himself was in their midst. So they all had to bail out and back off. So the workers were able to hang the doors. Oh, now when I think of doors or gates, these are the things that come to mind. Safety, security, privacy, access, entry, and of course, exit. Now, Nehemiah knew it did not make sense to build four walls without doors because that would literally be an open invitation to the enemies. So the doors were hung. They were set in place and barred. But what really caught my attention was the command given. Do not open the doors until the sun was hot. And I thought, why when the sun is hot? Why not early in the morning before it gets too hot? Or even mid-morning, or even in the evening when the sun was going down? Well, maybe he was thinking that when the sun is hot outside, it's extremely bright and they will be able to see everything that's going on around them. But can't they see everything in the mid-morning and in the evening as well? Folks, this was pure 
unadulterated wisdom from God himself that caused Nehemiah to say, do not open the doors until the sun was hot. Sometimes the Holy Spirit would tell us to do some unorthodox things that make absolutely no sense to us. Things that sound crazy and completely out of the norm. But this is when our faith is really put to the test. We really have to be connected to God in order to do these things because to think in our own flesh, we may very well think that God is crazy. God knew exactly what these men needed at this time. He always has a plan for us. Go with the flow even when it sounds crazy. He did not press upon the men to open the gates in the early morning nor in the evening, but when the sun was hot. Even though God knew that these men were tired, their hands were weak, they weren't day and night, so they hardly ate and slept. How crazy is this to now say, open the doors when the sun is hot? I have a few things planted in my yard, and I water early before the sun gets hot, or in the evening when it is going down. I'm sure you do the same. But there is no timing like God's timing. He knows exactly what we need, exactly when we need it. Here are some characteristics of the sun when it is hot. And these are just a few. Number one, it brightens your surroundings. So maybe he wanted them to see clearly in all directions. Number two, it, the sun is a great energy booster. Our energy levels increase when the sun is hot. Just as it brings life to our planet, it recharges us as well. God knew that these men needed to be recharged. Number three, as you know, we get vitamin D. The purpose of vitamin D is to maintain healthy bone strength. Now remember, when they said that they were, they were getting weak, Nehemiah said to God, now strengthen my hands. This command was an answer to prayer. God knew that he needed bone strength. Number four, sun exposure improves sleep quality. When sunlight hits our eyes, a message is sent to the part of our brain that produces melatonin to tell it to shut down on this, until the sun goes down. So when it is night, our bodies get a clear signal that it is time to sleep. Now melatonin is the hormone that makes us sleep. So everything they needed God was given in one dose. Number five, it helps keep internal balance and rhythm. This helps to regulate your body. Your waking, eating, and sleeping patterns are a natural part of that cycle. God knew that their waking, eating, and sleeping patterns were completely out of whack, completely disrupted due to the fact that they worked day and night. His intention was to restore them back to the norm. So God, in his infinite wisdom, told Nehemiah when to open those doors. At the time when the sun is hot, when everything they needed to bring their lives back to a state of normalcy was found in a one-size-fits-all dose of hot sun. Ain't God great and awesome? Now this brings me to our doors, our gates. Folks, we have to know when to open our gates. God told Nehemiah to open when, the, when it was time to restore, replenish, refresh, and lift up their spirits. This is when we should open our gates. Our two most important gates are our eyes and our ears. These are entrance gates only. Therefore, let us be careful what we watch and what we listen to. We may not have control over everything we see, but we can control everything we watch. We may not have control over th everything we hear, but we can certainly control what we listen to. Matthew 6, 22-23 says, The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. And this leaves us with the mouth gate. Now the mouth gate is an entry and exit gate. With the mouth gate, food can go in, and by the way, we need to watch what we eat. But words can come out, and that really is what we need to guard. 
the Bible says in Matthew 12, 34 and Luke 6, 45, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. But things do not get in our heart through our mouths. For what goes in our mouth enters the stomach and then exits as refuse. So how do things get into our hearts that come out of our mouth? The ear gate and the eye gate are the only two entry points into our lives. What we see with our eyes and hear with our ears are what goes into our heart and then eventually comes out of our mouth. So let us therefore be good gatekeepers and control access to and continue to guard our points of entry. Let us open our gates when the sun is hot, people, to restore, to replenish, to rebuild, and lift someone's spirits. I wish to thank you for listening to me over the past few weeks. Pray that I would have, I would have said something ever so little that would have ministered to someone over this period. Have a spirit-filled week, and God bless you all.